fifth generation of consoles probably has to be my favourite, because, you know, I love me some 3DO. Unfortunately, I was one of those poor kids who had to endure the PS1 and all of its terrible, terrible games, while my friends who owned N64s just laughed and continued playing the entire free games that were released on the thing. And it wasn't until a lot later when I actually got one, I realised... Wow. There's a lot more than free games on this thing. There's four. Yep, the Nintendo 64 and its game library has become quite the joke between me and... well, just me. But something I noticed is that there's some really great games hiding in plain sight because they either got bad reviews or just didn't sell well. So I had the 100% original, amazing idea to compose a list of all five of them. Why five? Well, I couldn't be asked to make ten and the video would have been way too long. And let's be honest here, who wants to sit through more than ten minutes of me, am I right? Aerogorge, or Aerogage if you can read. Yep, there's only one anti-gravity racing game fast-paced and awesome enough to satisfy my need for tight controls and amazing track design, and that game is Aerogage. It was released in 1998 by Locomotive Games, who you might also know for Road Rash 64, Jet Moto 3, and... Road Rash 64. It came out to reviews I wouldn't even give Hitler. Gaming magazines were ripping this thing to pieces left and right. Here is just an example of the sheer blasphemy we're dealing with here. Aerogage, a real stinker of a wipeout clone with pop-up cheating opponents and terrible controls. 10%. 10 percent. 10 fucking percent. But what do they know, fucking N64 magazine? Yeah, seriously, how long does it take you to come up with that name? Although fine, it doesn't deserve to be put anywhere near Wipeout or F-Zero, but to be fair, neither does pretty much anything ever. But unlike those two games, Aerogage doesn't restrict you to the track like a communist. Instead, you can move wherever the fuck you want, and it is awesome. This. This is anti-gravity racing. None of that bullshit. And because of this, they can do loads of really cool and not annoying at all things with the track design, like stick rocks and pillars everywhere. Yeah, that's fun. Thanks for that. And I'm just gonna, uh, throw this out there. The ships, you kind of sexually attracted to them. You're in an intimate relationship with your car. Yes. And sexually with your car. Yes. Two words. Black. Lightning. Bitch. Oh, and of course the control pad just in case you forgot what you were playing on. What you have in your hands right now. If this game had to be faulted on one single thing, it would probably be how empty it is. I mean, once you finish the tournament mode, I guess you could do a time trial, but let's be honest, who actually plays time trials, am I right? Because the N64 was buried in a hot, sweaty pile of Turok, Quake, and Goldeneye, the moment a third-person shooter showed up trying to wedge itself in there, it was greeted by a whopping 200,000 sales and a big I don't give a fuck by everyone. And for that reason, I'm going to be talking about Operation Winback. Or just Winback, if you're an American and saying the extra word is too difficult for you. But what exactly are you winning back? Well. Quite honestly, I have no idea. The story has something to do with terrorists using a giant space cannon or something like that, but to be honest, if their story was actually worth reading, they probably wouldn't have written it all in Comic Sans. The entire game plays exactly like an old-school first-person shooter, but just in third-person. Because all you do is shoot things. You shoot a lot of things. Sometimes you shoot people, and sometimes you shoot switches to open gates. And sometimes, if you're feeling adventurous, you can even shoot boxes. But wait, before I blow your mind with any more of this game's amazing mechanics, I should probably stop making fun of it and explain why it's on this list. To put it plainly, the controls, and the fact that they are so ahead of their time. It's widely acknowledged that this game was a huge influence to the cover system in Metal Gear Solid 2 and the aiming mechanic in Resident Evil 4. And yeah, you could say that those games are quite good. As for how this game looks, I hope you like what you're seeing, because unfortunately the controls weren't the only thing that was ahead of this game's time. It also has a lot of those really dull, grey, boring as shit environments first person shooters have today. <laughs> You know, that doesn't stop the music being great, the guns being really satisfying to fire, and John Luke having PERFECT hair. Body Harvest is one of those games that I've wanted to talk about for a really long ass time, and the only reason I haven't already is because 
I really have nothing to say about it. Body Harvest is just... Body Harvest. And once I've covered why you're shooting bugs during World War II, there's nothing really I can add to that. So, Body Harvest, or as I like to call it, Lego, but with bugs. Because... Because that's what it looks like. Yeah, okay, alright, thank you. Thanks. I will tell you something though, the story is actually pretty cool. It goes a little something like this. There's an alien race of giant bugs that are returning to Earth every 25 years to slowly harvest it for its resources. Seen this anywhere before? No, me neither. And a hundred years later, when the Earth is almost completely dead, we finally decide to do something. We send a genetically engineered super soldier back in time to repel the invasion over four completely different time periods. Ha. <laughs> Periods. I, I mean, tell me that isn't worthy of its own Iron Maiden song. Something you might find interesting is that the company that made this game later became Rockstar North, and there's a mission in GTA San Andreas called Body Harvest, referencing, obviously, the game they made. Ooh, look at them being clever. But in all seriousness, this is a really fun atmospheric game. The music is great and it's really satisfying to shoot bugs until they explode. Which is a good thing because you'll be jumped by them every four steps you take. And the controls are great, if you love GTA games, you'll love this. Even though the camera controls do take the piss. And the fact that this game is, to an extent, all free roam means that they can give you a huge array of vehicles that will vary depending on what time period you're in. Which would be awesome if you could see two feet in front of your face. Which is never because of the terrible view distance in this game. Oh, oh yeah, no, wait, of course, the fog is just there to add to the atmosphere. Yeah, I'll keep telling myself that. If you want my honest opinion, I'd say don't look at this and make your mind up now. Actually play it and just trust me, all the fun lies in the gameplay. Because hell, these character models aren't selling it, are they? If I could, I'd try and hide what the graphics look like and just recommend that you play it, because I kind of feel like by showing you this, I'm ruining the game. What I'm trying to say is that the graphics are probably the worst part of the game. Just, just please play it. Now, like I said, I never had the privilege of growing up with an N64, which makes me feel like I'm probably not the best person to be making this list. So, for the number two spot, I decided to enlist the help of someone else. Someone that actually grew up with the N64. Someone that really likes The Legend of Zelda. But more importantly, someone that actually doesn't mind being seen in one of my videos. Someone like, oh, I don't know, the Happy Mask Gamer. Hey, Jay, what's up, man? So, uh, what are you wearing? Oh, that's right, the video! <laughs> I knew that. So I loved your idea for the list, and I have the perfect game for you. LEGO Racers. I recently reviewed this game, and I also had this game as a kid, and I seriously loved it. It controlled great, had four different stackable power-ups, and you could even create your own racer and race car. I mean, yeah, the reason I love this game is probably because my 10 year old self weird obsession with Legos, or it could just be a good, enjoyable game. Sure, the song that plays during the construction of your vehicle is forever branded into my mind. But I put hours into my race car, making it completely and totally badass. There were six bosses, and every boss had their own setting to match their personalities. After beating all of them, you got your chance to race the Rocket Racer himself. God damn it, he was cool. Then you beat that bitch and take his car. Every race, I would stack the green power ups to the maximum and use the warp to jump out in front of people. If you've never experienced that, then I would go play Lego Racer. Because honestly, I don't know how that game never got noticed for what it is. Back to you, Jay. Ladies and gentlemen, the Happy Mask Gamer. I guess I should probably let your parents go now, huh? If you want to see a more in-depth review of LEGO Racers, you can check it out on over at the Happy Mask Gamers channel. It's actually pretty decent. And I seriously would take it as a personal favour if you were to subscribe. So, yeah, thanks for that. Here we are, number one. I'm not even going to fuck around and tease you here, I'm just going to straight up tell you. But before I do, I'm just going to warn you that once I do tell you, you're probably not going to understand my taste in games anymore. So, here we go. Are you ready? Well, you better be, because here it comes. Superman 64. Ha! Now that when I tell you what it actually is, it's not going to seem so bad. Castlevania 64. Boom. I'm just going to... Let that soak in there for a moment. Mmm. 
Yep, it's probably easier beating the fucking game than it is telling the people that watch your YouTube videos that you actually like Castlevania 64. And the moment I try to explain why is when it starts to get really controversial. I mean, really, what isn't here? In Castlevania, yeah, I'm calling it that, what are you gonna do? You play as either... This guy, the awesome vampire slayer, or a schoolgirl. Nope, no competition there. From the first few seconds of this game, it doesn't take a genius to see what they're trying to do here. That red and black gradient, that foreboding atmosphere, that ominous fog that the emulator isn't showing. Oh, oh no, I mean, ah, oh, my N64 isn't showing the fog, oh no. To put it simply, they tried to make Castlevania scary, and if I'm really honest, a lot of the time it's either really disturbing or straight up terrifying. And before you say it, yeah, they didn't have motorbikes in the 18th century, but they didn't have fucking skeletons either, so which one do you really want to argue? I mean, which one is real? And I've heard a lot of people say this game isn't hard. And of course not, this game isn't hard, apart from all the time. I mean, honestly, it's still good old-fashioned Castlevania difficulty, but just in something I like to call 3D. Yeah, I know, I should probably write a book or something. And in my personal opinion, the camera controls really aren't any worse than other games from the time. And the controls, well, the controls are just Castlevania's controls, stiff and precise. Sure, the targeting isn't Ocarina of Time tier, but it really isn't far off. Ha, <laughs> yeah, only a mile off. And that's all I can say, it's an unpopular opinion, but an opinion nonetheless. The reason it's on this list is because of the overwhelming amount of hate this game gets. I mean seriously, try bringing it up in conversation and not being instantly shot down and shunned for the rest of your life. I dare you. So, there you are, the top 5 N64 games I feel need way more love. I think this goes without saying, but I really could not care less about your opinion, so please do us all a favour and keep it to yourself. That being said, if you feel the need to share your own games with others, then you can use this really cool thing called the comment section. I hear it's quite popular these days. And if you're not a huge N64 fan, then why not share some other games that you feel need more attention? I would love to hear them. I mean other people might. And if you haven't heard of any of these games on my list before, it probably means I've done a good job of choosing them. So, thanks. And before I outstay my welcome, I should probably go. You know, I really have to get back to doing nothing for two months and then quickly rushing a video at the last second. Hello everybody, and thanks for sitting for another one of my videos. Let's just get this out of the way first, I'd like to thank the Happy Mask Gamer for lending his sexy face to my channel. You can check out some of his other videos here, and if you like them, which I'm sure you will, why not subscribe? As for me, well, who really cares? You can check out some other stuff I've made here, and if you don't like my voice, why not follow me on Twitter so we can talk and, I don't know, do other things that you do on Twitter, like talk. Oh yeah, and uh, Merry 4th of July, or whatever you Americans call it. <laughs>